Hey everybody, we've made it to the horseshoeing spot and Oliver is ready to go. And good news, the uh, farrier said we can, we can uh, video and document this today. So I'm gonna get him out and we're gonna get it going. A lot of you know that we've kind of been having a hard time finding a farrier for Oliver because he's a draft horse. And a lot of farriers don't like to work on draft horses because of their large size. In a recent video, we announced that we had finally found somebody who would work on Oliver and we had an appointment, but the guy ended up ghosting us and we basically never heard back from him. So we kept searching and found somebody else who wasn't too far from us. It was about a two hour drive for JR and Oliver. We've actually had a lot of folks asking us why we can't just leave Oliver barefoot lately in the comments and uh, one of the reasons though is our uh, ground is very hard and rocky it will literally wear the horse's hoof down where it becomes sore and hurts them which we do not want to happen to Oliver if a horse is left in the pasture and is not used they're fine to be barefoot but if we are riding them or they're in training like Oliver is right now they will for the most part need shoes on so their feet don't wear down I've been trimming them and trying yeah. to keep them from cracking and splitting and stuff. Right, that part's really good. He looks good. Got a beautiful big old frog, typical of his breed. Yeah, I guess them frogs are more important on a draft horse, huh? Because of the amount of blood they have to pump or something? Well, a, 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 frog's, a frog's important on any horse. Um, I feel like oh, that kind of get neglected sometimes. Oh, buddy. Damn. Yeah. So. They're a pretty important part of their anatomy. Like on my riding horses, I like to get that bar pretty far back or cut down so that the uh, they don't get like bar pressure or sore because they're hitting hard, you know, trotting. Right. But on a draft horse, I think that they're so heavy. Like, is the structure more important to be there? Yeah. So the the, the horse's bar is basically oh. just a continuation oh, of that hoof wall. So the bar can be. Somewhat weight bearing, what you really don't want to be weight bearing. That bar starts right here. Right in there. Yeah. What you don't want to be weight bearing is this. Okay. You want to define that bar. See how the bar is what kind of white line just like the hoof wall has? Yeah. So you want to define all that and make sure to where that supports that keeps this from folding in and just you know getting messed up. Okay. So you want that there. Um, but not just super weight bearing. Cool. He's not got just a lot of foot to trim off. So. No, my my ground is so rocky and gravelly. Uh -huh. That's why I wanted him shod so bad. I don't want to wear him down to nothing. Right. I've been trying just to work him in the field and practice in the field, but then I got to get the mares out of the field and everything yeah. else, you know. So yeah. the gravel road would be so much handier. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Be good boy. Be good, Don Lover. I tried working on this. He really hated doing this at oh, he first. Did? Yeah. This pedestal thing. Yep. Good boy. Hey, you'd be good. Yeah, he'd stand up on it, he'd flip it over. Like he figured it out. Ooh, easy. You'd be good. Shouldn't have said that out loud. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Trying to tape up their feathers when I'm working on their feet so I can see better. Yeah. I did wash them for you this morning because yeah, they So what what's the little tab on the front called and what's it for? So it's called a clip. Uh, if, it's, if it's on the very front, it's called a toe clip. And it just takes a lot of the shearing forces off the nails. On these really big horses like that, even though we use a pretty big nail, that's a lot of a lot of weight coming down on those nails and, and uh, a lot of shearing forces. So we just put that fit that clip into the hoof wall, like part of the hoof wall, and then you know if you think about it, the horse is going to come down and push against that, and it's taking instead of all the shearing forces on those nails, it's just going to push it up against that. And that's gonna hold it in place. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. 
I've, I knew you were probably going to do that because I've seen it on TV or on, you know, research. Yep. But I've never done it on a riding horse, so I right. just didn't know. Yeah. Yep, that's the reason for it. That's one thing I'm still missing since I'm just a aspiring horseshoer. I made my anvil out of a uh, railroad rail <laughs> and it's lacking a lot of good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, whatever works, right? Yeah. That being said, uh, if you do this every day, you want something that yeah. that's going to be good. You know, it's going to help you get your, help you in your trade. Stay in there now. So that kind of marks where you have to take out for it to fit in, huh? Yep, yeah, I mark that and then I kind of just cut it in lightly and then I'm going to burn it in. Yeah, and it doesn't hurt them because it's just the fingernail part of the hook, yep. right? The biggest thing is you. Uh, you don't want to trim them so short that there's nothing left to fit to hot fit. Stand, bud. That's the most important thing. And the next thing is you want to hold that on there to fit it to the foot, but not so long that the, a lot of the heat penetrates. But you're all right, son. So just so we're clear, hot fitting a shoe like this does not hurt the horse. It's just like burning the tip of your fingernail, and it lets the farrier make a more orthopedic fit. I assume the work you did on the back of that was to get that wide, how wide his heel bulb is, like his frog yeah. to yeah. clear. Yeah, this, and I was still a little long here. So I just wanted to, yeah. you know, to grind it down. The shoe was just a little too big. Yeah, and that way he won't step on it and pull it off. Yeah, that's the idea. That's what I, I was thinking, yeah. Not all the edges soft, there's no sharp edges anywhere. So if he does step on something, hopefully it'll slide off. Oh, okay. It won't cut him. Beautiful. Yeah. Plus, it looks better that way. Yeah. You gotta take pride in your work, right? Yeah, absolutely. We're right there. Awesome. Frog's cleared. We're all good. We got expansion on the bottom, but not. <clears throat> Very nice. It's fit, fit up good. I Heck. Think, I think he'll like that. I thought you were expensive. I'm gonna have to give you a tip. See? That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> It's all the quality of work. It's all yeah. the quality of work. There's definitely a difference between somebody starting out and a master. I can tell you that. Well, it just comes down to having pride in your work and want to do the best that you can do, whatever you do. Is that hot right now or can I touch no, it? No, that's cold. You can pick it up. Oh, it's not as heavy as I was expecting. Oh, he's plenty big enough to handle it. Oh, yeah. No, I was just expecting it to be yeah. oh, a couple pounds or so. Right. That probably doesn't even weigh a pound, does it? Half, uh, a, half a pound, maybe? Yeah, I'm not sure how much it would weigh. No. I've never put one on a scale set to know. Yeah. They're not that much thicker than a standard horseshoe. Uh, they're just a lot wider. This yeah. is a cool, uh, uh, shooting draft horse is, is it, it's hard work, it can be brutal work, but you did your homework, he stands pretty good. Uh, it's, a, it's a really cool trade. Yeah. Um, you know, you can, just like any other horse, you can go and just slap some shoes on, but there, there's a lot that can be done with these guys. Yeah. It takes more time and it, it, it takes it takes a little more effort because these guys are big. Even if they stand perfect, there's a lot of weight hanging off of those legs. Yeah. Which I mean he could be better like if I had time to have exercised him today where he wasn't fresh. Right. Out of a stall, you know, and if yep. he, if he was at home, 
he would be probably be more apt to not be. You no, know, two, yeah, year, this, two year olds get curious and this stuff. Strange environment. But yeah, he's been doing pretty good. Yeah. After you get these front two uh, nailed on, if you give me just three minutes, I'll just give his mind yeah. a break and, and move him, and I think he'll be even better. Perfect. You know? Yeah, please them, do that. Them two year old minds, they don't last forever. Oh. They may. My four year old minds don't last forever. Oh, baby. Um, oh, you'd be good. Do not move. Yeah, do not move. He says, that smoke thing again. Be good. Give it, no. Stand, babe. Hey. You're my boy. Be good. Uh, yeah, sigh, because it's frustrating. I understand. of growth on the frog. Okay. So I want to come back to the back of the frog. And okay. that's pretty well exactly where we're at on here. Yeah. Very so, neat. Yeah. If you bring it all the way back to here, he's probably got to step it off. And to my in my mind at that point it becomes not support but leverage. Yes. Yeah. If you bring it too far back. That makes sense. Yeah. On a, on a really flat horse <clears throat> you've got a lot of a lot of strain on the tendon. Mm -hmm. It's just gonna put a lot of strain on the tendon. On a really upright horse, there's going to be a lot, a lot of concussion. Mm -hmm. So that's that, that's the flip side of the deal. That and the the, uh, the suspensory ligament and the flex tendons kind of work together, where you in that optimum uh, uh, angle. They're both got their the right amount of tension. Mm -hmm. If you put them up, one get receive more tension than relax the other. If you put them way down, do you ever use a gauge? No. Or you just do it by lot eye? Yep. And I'll tell you why. Uh, I don't think you can be good with a gauge, but it can a gauge can also lie to you. Right. Mine. Uh, so no, I don't use a gauge myself. Uh, on my, my Fox Rider trail horses, I never get steeper than a 54. Right. Uh, but I had, like I say, on a show horse, I have been up to a 60. And yeah. then, uh -huh. then show season over, I pull those right. and lower it for trail riding. Give them, a little, <laughs> give them a little break. So what you're saying is it's probably not optimum for that horse's, you know, for that horse's No, it, it, well, like I say too, that exaggerated show gate, they couldn't do that all day. No. Uh -uh. I'm asking for 110% effort for, for that 10 minutes. minute yeah. class, yeah. you know. Right. And means. even in practice, I don't ever go to that 110% ask, but maybe once or twice, just to see what you can get. Yeah, and I go like 90%, 90%. Yeah. And then every once in a while, I'll ask for that 110% effort, you know. Yep. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Our draft horse is the same amount of time as a riding horse on a set of shoes? No, it takes me longer. No, no. Uh, oh, as six, far as, six to eight weeks. Oh yeah, as far as how long the between shoes? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Same deal. How about that? Standing pretty good for that part. <laughs> there you go. Awesome. Oh, another cycle that'll grow down. See how it's rolled up a little bit? Yeah. Yeah, I go down to be good. They look good, Oliver. Got some Nikes. Okay, so now the front ones are done. And now it's time to start on the back ones. Are the back ones, do you try to get them around too, or do you leave them kind of home plate shaped? Uh, so they're going to be more of a, have more of a pointy toe. So yeah, uh, that's the, uh, there's actually a reason for the shape of that. The front feet bear about 60, 65% of the body weight. So they're, they're, they're a very important part of the weight bearing. The hind feet are, they're, they're the motor. The hind hand is the horse's motor. So think about when the horse pushes off, 
that pointy toe is gonna it's gonna grab and push. So he's got a good shape then. He, he, yep, he's got a good shaped hind foot. If you look at the cornet band or di dissect some feet. Uh, so what's the cornet? The cornet band is where the foot's grown from. There's oh a, yeah, up here. Right up here. Yep. Right. Um, the, the shape of that is going to reflect the shape of the coffin bone. And if you look some, at coffin bones on cadaver feet, the, the hind feet are going to be more of a triangle shape. Cool. Whereas the front will be more round. So all in all, he's got a good feet and good hooves. He's got good feet. Everything's good there. Is there any truth to that color of the hoof being important or not? I don't hold any stock in it. Um, I've kind of got my own theory on why people think that. I don't know if it's true or not, but I think on a white foot, any imperfection is going to show up quicker. Like you'll be able to see it better. Yeah. And I wonder if that's not part of it, but I've seen so many really good white feet and so many black feet that were less than desirable that I don't, I don't hold any stuff in it at all. I don't, I don't paint anything. Good. So, that being said, I won't argue with somebody that Think there is something to that you know I, I'll, I'll respect that but me personally i don't it doesn't worry me a bit it should be good because this guy's got white feet <laughs> and he got good feet so there you go yep a little wore down more wore down than i'd have liked but i didn't want to quit working him that's gonna change in the next cycle to get some growth on him The flares on these back ones, is there any difference in how flared out they are? Because I notice they flare a little more than the front ones. A lot of times they'll flare more on the outside. Mm -hmm. um, and these show horses, though, I trim them that way. They'll trim them straight up and down on the inside with a lot of flare on the outside. So, and that's only on the hind foot. On the front foot, they'll flare the inside and the outside. But this, I mean, he's actually fairly symmetrical, but notice how he's got a little more on the inside. I just wanted to point out how well behaved Oliver is being. He's being so patient and so good. You got to remember, he's a two-year-old and this is his first set of shoes. Do these get a clip as well? Yep, they'll get a toe clip, just like the front. Get, get, get Don't want to push it out of that shoe. Your wrath definitely cuts better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> That's it's, why I've went to using an angle grinder on him to keep his feet in shape. Have you? Yeah. Yep. It pays for me, you know, shoot every day. It pays to have a wrath that's sharp. It's way cheaper to keep buying a new wrath than it is to have surgery and the wore out at 30 because I've been pushing a no wrath. Now, how old are you? I'm 26. No kidding. I know. The old bald head. Bald head and tricked me. <laughs> it's a different look. But... <laughs> yep. No, I'm 26. You shave that just to look more distinguished, don't yep. you? It worked. <laughs> it's a unique smell. Yeah, it is. I got to where I. I, uh. Kind of like it, well, believe it or not. Smells like money, do you? Smells like money, yep. <laughs> that's actually a pretty common phrase. I'm <laughs> that's funny, you can't remember that. Smells like money. So th this to me is a, is a really nice hind shaped foot. I mean, there, obviously it's busted up a little bit, but this, this is what, this is what the foot's gonna be. This is the shape of the white line. You can, it's kind of hard to see, mm -hmm. but that white line flows around out there. Um, this is the outside, this is the inside. The inside's a little straighter, mm -hmm. pretty common. The outside comes out and around. The coffin bone's usually the same shape like that. The outside comes out and around more. Cool. Think of the base of a building. The outside, the, your, your, uh, your foundation, you want to support on the outside, right? Yeah. Same thing here. 
So yeah, and he's so, got a, kind of more of a pointy toe to push off of. The frog is huge on this oh, guy. Oh yeah. Are they always that big? Yep, that's per, that's really common. That's just a big frog. Um, that frog on a barefoot horse acts kind of a, as a brake. It's like, it's rubbery. So when they step, then they, when they, that it, it kind of, kind of stops them. It's kind okay. of a brake, that way it's. I always heard it was like, it does two things. Like one, it spreads the weight out all the way across the bone. Yeah. And then it also helps pump blood. Is there any truth to it helping pump blood? Well, so that, that's kind of an old, uh, I don't want to call it a myth. The, 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 the frog is actually not a pump. The, the foot has a really unique uh, way of pumping the blood back up into the body. Um, but the frog is actually not like the heart. Okay. It does not pump that in there. there it's like a hydraulic system. When that horse, it's hard for me to explain it. When the horse stands, it kind of locks. It's like a hydraulic. That, yeah. that when he stands, it, 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 it locks. Yeah, so and kind of more like a goat's foot. If you've ever looked like the front is hard, but the back is, feels like that. It's mm -hmm. rubbery and it, yeah. it, it gives the traction or the stop. Yep, Okay. that's more, the, that's more of the, the uh, function of a frog. Even, um, what's that word? Uh, r ratio to ratio size of his frog to the size of his hoof is his frog is still bigger than it's a riding bigger, horse yeah, bigger I than a riding so. horse's frog for the reason for that is there the draft horse foot it's not just it's not necessarily just a lot bigger vertical you know it, it's bigger vertical but it's 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 horizontal is where your growth is they're way wider mm -hmm. uh, there's it's distributed over such a big a, a, a bigger area and the frog's the same way it's just it's just a lot wider and thicker Cool. Good boy, Oliver. Oh boy, almost done. Is it harder to quick a draft horse? Like, is there a lot more room to nail? Yeah, there's a lot more room. Uh, not saying that you can't quick one, but yeah, it will. It's it's easier to not quick with. Since I'm not, you know, classically trained, I've just kind of self-taught and YouTube taught and picked yeah. stuff up like I'm asking, you know, i questioning uh -huh. you for knowledge. That's just all I, the training I've had on shoeing. I never put the back nails in my horses I shoe because I'm scared to quick them because I've always heard the back ones quick them easier than the front ones. Yeah, because the back, the, the back half of the foot has a, usually the football is a little thinner more straight up and down so you don't have much room. Um, it's interesting you say how, how you leave those back nails out. I usually do too. Just because a, a, a horseshoe has eight, eight nails, or in this case, 10 nails in it, doesn't mean we need to use them all. Um, they're, not, they're not necessarily needed. I very rarely Stand, bud. put more than six nails in a, in a light horse. And is that just for the pressure or the... Oh, well, there's less chance of quicking them. And there's less, you do, I mean, let's face it, every nail we put in the foot displaces some hoof wall. So, you know, the, the less hoof wall I'm displacing, oh. Oh, oh. the happier I'm gonna be. You need to poop. Stand, bud. Give them a break. Awesome. I'm not so, so much about being classic. Yeah. But I want to get real usable stuff where I'm actually doing jobs with him because I have a kind of a thought that if I'm actually working yeah. and it's not just a novelty and I'm getting stuff done like two birds with one stone, yeah. I'll use him more and he'll get better and better and better. Oh, yeah. So what I'm really wanting is a brush hog with its own motor on it because uh -huh. I've noticed like a lot of Amish people convert PTO my hay dad's got, My dad's got one with a motor on it. Oh, a brush hog? Yep. Will he sell it? I doubt it. Well, I'm sure he would for the right money, but you can probably do better by getting one converted. Well, maybe he'll just let me see how he did it. Oh, yeah. Is he open today, his store? Yeah. I want to uh, go buy some nails anyway. Yep. Yeah, ask him about it. Okay, cool. I'm fixing up a trailer for hauling wood. Uh-huh. And my dad's like a really good mechanic. Uh-huh. And can just fix anything. And he has to, he burns all, like more wood than any human alive. Because uh -huh. his house is huge and it's yeah. all wood heat. Uh -huh. So I'll trade him doing mechanic work for cutting wood. And go. I thought I'd use Oliver for all of that. 
But I really don't know, the other thing, I don't know how much is too much weight. You know, like I don't know what a horse can pull, and I don't know how steep of a hill I can go up, and I don't know how steep of a hill I can go down, and well, I just have so much to learn. Yeah, just watch your horse. Um. Oh, Oliver. The best thing Oliver. is to have your horse in condition for what you want him to do. Like, you know, obviously, you know, when you bought him, he was real thin and 900 pounds. You didn't want to just go out and hammer off on him then. He's in good shape now. You will be amazed at what this horse can, can comfortably pull. Yeah. yeah, like the other day, just sitting on the sled, I didn't know if he'd be able to pull me. Huh? Oh yeah, he didn't even feel that. Yeah. Well, we're almost done. All in all, how's he been, you think, for a two-year-old stud? The first, first set of shoes ever, obviously. I think he's, I think he's done really good for being a two-year-old. Um, obviously, he did a good job getting him where he's at. Um, he's not sure yet about everything that's going on. So I'll give him a shoeing or two and he's going to get a lot better. But he's stayed, he stayed calm, so that's, that's the number one thing. So yeah, I think he's been good. They sure look good on him. Yeah, just get that foot to grow out all the way. He's gonna have really good looking feet. We done? We done. Awesome. That was a good job, man. I can, I've been around horseshoers enough to know that this was a high quality job. Okay, I'm just down the road at the horseshoe and supply shop that Ruben's father owns, not even a mile away. And uh, this is just kind of what I've been looking for right here. This is a uh, brush hog that's set up with its own motor so that a horse can pull it and i don't know it's a real heavy built one but i don't know that one horse couldn't maybe pull this with the four cart it shouldn't be too awful heavy i like how it's set up i guess this probably goes under tension when it needs to pull yeah this lever here okay yeah so this is this is what engages it oh he can probably reach that from the four cart Yeah, so that's how you engage and disengage. That's a good idea. Fuel pump over there on the tank. And then this is... That's to raise and lower. And then it's got a really interesting double blade. I wonder what that's for. For really heavy brush, maybe? Never seen that before. Yeah, this is heavier than what I would need for just mowing grass pastures. So I could adapt this to just what I want. 35 horsepower Vanguard. Very interesting. So this is in Hartville, Missouri. And he has a horse fer uh, farrier supply shop. And he can ship anything you need. I think for only $10 is what I've heard that is and shipping it. Okay, I'm here at Ruben's father's uh, horseshoe and supply store, the farrier shop. And this is the best farrier shop I've been in in a long time. There, He has got everything and the prices are so low that I was shocked. His son came out and sold me a box, a hundred count uh, regular head eights for I think under $10. Um, and I said, are you sure you want to check that price? And he thought, why, why is that too high? I said, no. That's about half the price is at the farm store. He's got anvils, forges. I mean, he's got everything you would need or want. And the best thing about it is he has a courtesy shipping rate of, you said $10 shipping? Yeah. Is that just in state or is that across the country or what? Across the country. Across the country. And pretty much like horseshoes and everything you can ship? That, that's for the general, general shoeing supplies. General shoeing supplies. Anvils, forges, 
uh, bar stock and all that is more. Yeah. So General Schumann Supplies, he's got everything you need. Pads, nails, hammers, tools. $10 shipping anywhere in the country. You cannot beat that deal. So, and what's your phone number here? And that's 417-554-1772. Sunrise Farrier Supplies. Alrighty, cool. And really quick, before this ends, we want to make sure to say thank you to all the folks who have sent items from our Amazon wish list. You can find that in the description of the videos, and it's just a fun way to support our channel. These mineral salt blocks came from Jeanette and BK. Thank you so much. The horses love these. And we'd like to thank Leah, Karen, and then Lisa and her cat, Oliver, <laughs> for sending these horse dewormers. Uh, they're very handy to have around, and we really appreciate you guys helping us take care of our horses. Thank you so much. And then BK got us a dustpan for our barn and you wouldn't think it was anything special but oh my gosh thank you so much we really needed this and it has been so handy and then barbara got us a visa gift card to help purchase feed for our horses and we really appreciate this thank you so much barbara and we got some hose attachments which are very handy uh, a couple of our hoses got ran over by a lawnmower this year so these will go into fixing those instead of throwing them away and these came from jeanette so thank you so much and then Penny actually sent me some boots, and I really appreciate it, Penny. I love these. They're so cute, and they fit me perfectly, and they're going to be super handy to wear around the horses, the homestead, and all the work that we do. Thank you so much. There was no note with this tack hook that was sent, but we sure appreciate whoever sent this, and this will go in our tack room to hang bridles and stuff like that up. And then Kelly got us this really beautiful saddle blanket. Uh, we were excited to receive this. Thank you so much, Kelly. We sure appreciate all the love and support. We will talk to you guys next time. God bless you all.